everyone, Alyssa Knight here. And if we haven't met before, I'm the host of Night TV. Night TV is a series of shows every week focusing on hacking embedded systems and IoT security. In this new series of episodes, we're going to be focused on hacking BLE smart locks. Now, one of the things I want to emphasize is the fact that these smart locks aren't just for the average consumer to install on their front door as part of their smart home initiative, but also being installed on automobiles by car makers. So they're replacing your traditional locks on the doors with these BLE smart locks, which is Bluetooth low energy. It's, it's not Bluetooth. It actually operates at a different frequency. And in addition to not just locking and unlocking the door because you're in proximity of your car, but also has the ability to start the vehicle uh, just simply by being near that car. And so this is a, a, a move in a, in, in a direction to adopt BLE technology. And what we're gonna be doing in these series of episodes is exploiting that through an attack called a relay attack. Not to be confused with a replay attack, this is a type of man in the middle attack where we've got two Raspberry Pis, and I'm gonna actually walk through the configuration and installation of this. So for you Raspberry Pi uh, fans out there, we're gonna be walking through that configuration of Raspbian, and we'll also be walking through the configuration of Gattacker. So in a relay attack, you have what's called your peripheral Pi, which is going to be near the victim's uh, mobile device, uh, and the central Raspberry Pi, which will be sitting next to the lock on the door. And the peripheral Pi will basically be grabbing that Bluetooth device information and sending that information to the central Pi that will broadcast that Bluetooth information out, uh, the Bluetooth MAC address, to the lock. The lock will think that the owner is standing in front of the door and if they have an armful of groceries or they've got their baby or they've got whatever tying up their hands and they can't reach into their pocket to grab their phone, uh, this sort of passive access uh, will unlock the lock automatically simply by being within proximity of it. So this is going to be a very interesting series of shows where we're going to be focused on hacking the Kiva lock from Quickset, uh, the August the Assure Lock SL from Yale, which is powered by August, and I think they're simply just using the August app. I don't think August owns the Yale. I think there's just a, a partnership between the two companies. Uh, the Ellipse by Lattice, which is a bicycle lock uh, powered by Bluetooth. Um, and we will also be looking at the Haven Connect, uh, which is actually 10 times stronger than a deadbolt. Basically, the way the Haven Lock works is it sits below the door on the floor and pops upwards. and Unless it's disarmed, it prevents you from kicking that door in or using a traditional lock and key to unlock that door and, and be able to push that open. Uh, we will actually be looking at the Dana lock as well. Um, unfortunately, in the process of testing, uh, I accidentally bricked the lock. I don't know how um, initially the, the attack succeeded, uh, but even after a factor reset, the Dana lock doesn't seem to be coming back. So uh, I'm hoping <laughs> I'll be able to get Amazon to take that back. Uh, I will also be uh, taking a look at the August Smart Lock Pro, which will be this episode today, uh, which we will walk into. So it's going to be really exciting. You definitely don't want to miss this series of episodes if you're interested in hacking BLE, if you're interested in hacking embedded systems. The Night TV is an episode every week that you're not going to want to miss. So at the end of this attack lab, at the end of these six episodes, we're going to be looking at a technology from Level which has figured out a way to biometrically fingerprint radio devices. So uh, when a wireless device is, is projecting a radio signal, uh, that signal actually is unique to every mobile device. So every device, if, if we're all in a room together, each one of our mobile phones will actually have a unique fingerprint with its, with its radio waves. And so what Level does is it basically, like you would biometrically fingerprint your finger for a biometric lock, it biometrically fingerprints your radio waves. And if I'm standing outside the door with my mobile device, Level will look at my mobile device and say, you know what, that radio fingerprint matches Alyssa's phone. Let's go ahead and unlock that door. But if it's a Raspberry Pi that's relaying that signal saying it's Alyssa's phone, it's not. Level will look at that radio, unique radio fingerprint and say, ah, oh, this doesn't match Alyssa's device. Uh, I'm not going to unlock the door. So very effective technology. Uh, we'll be taking a look at that at the end of this series. 
Uh, so definitely stick around, grab that cup of joe, and join me for a very special series of episodes on Night TV. What's up everyone? We are ready to go ahead and get the Raspberry Pis configured. I just want to quickly go over the architecture of our hacking lab here. Uh, in this particular diagram, you're going to see the peripheral Pi and the central Pi. The central Pi is 192.168.164.107. That's my slave in essence. So you're going to actually be running the command node WS slave, and that will again be the central pie right next to the lock. So if this were a house and a front door with the August Lock Pro installed on the front door, the central pie would be the Raspberry Pi that's going to be sitting next to the lock. And the peripheral pie, if you remember from my use case where we were going to follow the owner uh, to a Starbucks, uh, the peripheral pie is where uh, we would actually take that um, Raspberry Pi and, and put it next to the cell phone uh, with the uh, August Lock app installed on it. So the node advertise command is the one we're going to be running on the peripheral Pi and that Pi ends in .183. Again, uh, the node advertise command is being run on the peripheral. Now you're probably wondering why would you run the node advertise command on the peripheral Pi uh, instead of the central pie. And the reason why is because uh, that is going to be where our devices file uh, files are stored and we'll actually be issuing initiating a connection to the central pie to perform that scan. So again, the peripheral pie is going to connect to the central pie and actually perform those commands. So that's the architecture. Again, central next to the lock, peripheral next to the phone. In my configuration in my house, uh, I am actually, I've got the central pie sitting next to the August Lock, right here, the August Lock Pro. And the Raspberry Pi is sitting right next to it here in my room. And uh, on the other side of our house is the peripheral pie where I'm going to take my cell phone. And the peripheral pie should hopefully be able to find that, uh, that Bluetooth. Uh, information, relay it, and uh, hopefully get the lock to open. So we're going to go ahead and test that in this lab. And the first thing I want to do is actually walk through the configuration of the Pies. There really isn't much information out there uh, on how to configure Gitacker and the Raspberry Pi. So again, that's that's a lot of the reason why I wanted to cover this setup. Uh, I When I see a lack of content out there, I like to create it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into the configuration. The first thing I want to do is walk through the configuration of the central pie. Um, okay, so the first thing uh, that I want to uh, clarify is that I'm running Raspbian on these Raspberry Pis. And the other thing I want to point out is that I was actually using the latest version of Node.js. Bad idea. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, there were a lot of problems in running the latest version of Node.js. And the other thing that I wanted to let you know is when you're setting this up, it's really important that you check to make sure that there are no other versions of Node.js running on the machine, running on, uh, installed in Raspbian. So this caused a big problem and I, it took me a few hours to try and troubleshoot it. And it was because there was another version of Node.js installed. I think it was, I think it was grabbed by a package. So. I had to walk through the uninstallation of that using apt-remove. 
So just so you know, again, make sure that there's no other versions of Node.js running and you're actually gonna be downloading version eight of Node.js and not running the latest version. Um, if you can get the latest version running, great, more power to you, but I had a lot of problems, um, one problem after another, it, it just wasn't working. Um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So again, you're gonna wanna go grab the latest version of Raspbian. Um, I, I can't tell you what version this is that I downloaded, but I don't remember. Let me see. So this is running uh, kernel version 4, 1997, V7 plus, um, whatever that means. <laughs> Just go grab Raspbian. Um, that's downloads.raspberrypi.org slash Raspbian underscore latest. Now, um, I like Etcher. Uh, you're going to want to obviously burn that to the SD card. Your uh, Raspberry Pi is going to come with, so here's another one of my Pis. Um, you're going to have a little SD card. You're going to want to obviously have an adapter to hook that up to your computer to burn the latest version of Raspbian on it. Um, I like Etcher. Um, yeah, so my recommendation is use Etcher. It's free, it's open source, it's got a pretty little GUI. I use Etcher for everything. Uh, then you're gonna go and you're gonna download uh, Node.js version eight on both the RPIs. Um, again, I want you guys to go ahead and type in sudo which node um, and make sure that it doesn't find anything under the root account and then I want you to type in which node um, and in this case, I, <laughs> you guys can actually see this. Uh, you can see that um, I tried Node.js version 12, which I think was the latest. I had a lot of problems with it. I ended up moving that to Node.js v12 and then installed Node.js v8 and that fixed all my problems. Um, I wanna give shout out to Guy over at um, LastLine who, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, uh, I want to give a shout out to Guy over at Level who uh, helped me uh, troubleshoot through this. But yeah, you want to make sure that you're running Node.js version 8. So uh, to do that, you're just going to type um, wget. You're going to grab that. So go to your Pi directory. You're going to type in wget. And there's the URL for Node.js are going to untar that. I always use the dash Z automatically default to that because I'm so used to thinking guns it. Um, okay, so then you're gonna go to node V8 and it's um, actually, actually it's even more simple that you're going to actually just do a move. And you're gonna move node V8 to user local lib node JS. Okay. Mine's already there, so I'm not gonna run that command again. Um, once you copy that over, you're gonna need to set your environment variable. So you're gonna just make sure you're the Pi user and you're going to edit your that profile file. He didn't fall? Inconceivable. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Um, the purpose of this is you're basically gonna be adding Node.js to your path. So at the bottom, I want you to type in export space path equals to user local lib node.js and then mine again is dot v8 slash bin and then you're gonna just do colon dollar sign path in all caps. Once you do that, you're just going to, um, oops. dot space tilde slash dot profile or source another way to do this. Okay, so 
echo dollar sign path, and it should show you um, Node.js in your path, right? Type in which node, just make sure it's being called from that directory. You've got no other funky versions of node sitting around. And I just want you to just type in node minus V, make sure it shows node 18 dot set, or sorry, node 8.17. Um, I want you to type in NPM space version. You should come up with a bunch of version info. And then I want you to type in NPX minus V. Next, I'm gonna have you install Gattacker, and that's just sudo apt get install, or sudo apt, sorry, I guess you don't have to do that anymore. Sudo apt install, Bluetooth, Use lib Bluetooth dev lib dev dev. So it's going to go through mine, of course. I've already got everything installed. This is going to run. It actually doesn't take that long. I think it took me, I don't know, five minutes. I mean, it's it's not it's not a long time. Um, all right. So once you do that, you're going to go ahead and type in npm space install noble. And once uh, that completes, you're going to actually install Blino after that, and then Gattacker. npm install Blino. Should walk through the same install process. And of course, if you want to help them with some funding, there's a process, there's a command there that will give you the funding information. And we're going to go ahead and install Good Hacker. Sorry, I haven't had much coffee today. So once Good Hacker is installed, um, and I'm going to cancel that out because I actually uh, overwrote Good Hacker with some, my own custom files. I don't want to overwrite those. Uh, there is a script uh, that, a custom script that I've been using. Um, I'm going to look at possibly publishing that. So stay tuned on that if I can make that available to all of you guys without a problem. Um, okay, so again, I, I mean, even without that custom script, uh, you guys should be able to run this just fine. It's just some quick hacks. Uh, now you're going to, if I do end up publishing these uh, custom scripts, um, you're gonna actually overwrite the node modules directory. So. Let me just show you where I'm at. I mean, in this case, let me just make sure that you guys understand that I'm in my home folder. And once you run all those commands, you're gonna actually get a node modules directory. And in node modules, you're gonna have a good attacker directory. I apologize to the author of good attacker if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Anyway, so what you're gonna do is, if I do end up publishing the custom scripts, you're just gonna copy that file as a 7z file over to this folder right here, and you're just gonna, un you're gonna 7-zip or unzip it. All right, next you're gonna wanna actually find out what is the device number of the Bluetooth adapter so one of the things in the shopping list is a little bluetooth adapter that you're going to stick inside the uh the, the raspberry pi you need to find out what device that is so in my case as you guys can see here for bus it's bus is usb right that's going to be hci zero for me some of you it may be hci one but this is my onboard Bluetooth, and just so you, in case you don't know, HCI config is basically like if config, right? It's the same thing, only showing your Bluetooth interfaces. So sudo HCI config, all right? So in my case, it's HCI zero. Then you're gonna actually edit the config environment variables. Um, this isn't all that fancy. All you're gonna do is uncomment this line and you're gonna change that device number to whatever device number it is on your system. In my case, again, mine was HCI zero, so I put a zero for both Noble and Duino. And uh, here for WS slave, because this is the central Pi, remember, it is the actual slave. So uh, you're gonna leave that as the local loopback interface, or 127.0.1. <clears throat> and if for any reason you wanna change your devices folder, uh, change that there. Anyway, okay, 
So once you're done putting and replacing the, uh, the device number in that file, we are going to hop over to making sure that we then set up our Bluetooth lock. So we've got the send. I just want to review this real fast. We basically downloaded and installed Node.js version 8. We downloaded and installed, um, let me go back over this. We also installed Bluetooth Blues, libbluetooth dev, libudev dev. We installed Noble, Blino, and Gattacker. Um, if I publish the custom scripts, you're going to copy over the, the custom Gattacker scripts. And uh, we used HCI config to figure out what the device ID number is. In my case, it was HCI0. You're going to edit the config.env file, and you're going to set the device number to whatever your, your, your device number is on your system. In my case, it was 0. Next, we're going to set up the Bluetooth lock. So I've already got this one set up. I wanted to, in the rest of the attack lab, I'm not going to open up the box first and then do it. I'm going to actually unbox it with you guys so you guys can see that I'm not modifying the lock in any way. Um, I guess you're just going to have to trust me on the August Lock Pro. I didn't modify it or change it in any way. I basically just put the batteries in it. That's all, all I did. Um, just so you guys can see that. Okay, there's nothing, there's no modifications to this whatsoever. Um, so just put the batteries on. Um, as you can see, I didn't hook it up to a door. Uh, the August Lock is funky. You're not going to be able to set it on your desk like this. Um, you're not going to, the best way to do is just set it on your desk on its side. Um, if you want to install it in your door, great. I, mean, I think after you guys see these hacks, you're not going to want to install it on your front door. Um, but I, the best thing to do is really just leave the lock on your desk like this. Like this, like this so it can roll. Um, Otherwise, when you try and unlock it, it will actually say that the door is jammed because uh, it can't turn. So let me show you guys really quickly what this looks like. I want to walk through um, this setup here. Okay, so you guys can see my phone. All right, you can see that the August lock is saying that the lock is armed or locked. Now I'm going to go ahead and hold the lock. I still haven't figured out how I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to put the lock in front of the um, camera, but uh, I'm going to do the actual hack. But I'm going to try and hold this. Are you guys ready? I'm going to click the... Okay, you guys saw that. All right, there's nothing funky going on here. I haven't modified or changed anything. You guys can see that uh, the phone is, the app is installed, and I'm able to lock and unlock the lock with the mobile app. It's a standard configuration, no hacking going on here yet. Um, you install the app, plop the batteries in the lock, and you're ready to, you're ready for the races. All right. So, now that we've done that, I want to walk you guys through the configuration of peripheral, of your peripheral Pi. Here. All right. Let's talk about peripheral. Again, the peripheral Pi is going to be the same setup instructions that we performed earlier. I'll quickly go through those again. You guys can see sudo which node. There's no other version of node installed. Node just installed. If I type in which node is myself. User local lib no just I probably should have been more consistent left it no just dot v8 like the other one but whatever um just throw your guys' version of node.js into user local lib no js um again you're just gonna w get that um just going to download that file. I guess I could have copied and pasted that. <laughs> Sorry. Work smart, not hard, Ellie. Um, then you're going to type in tar xvf node v817 blah 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 blah. Um, make sure you're in your home directory when you're doing this stuff. It's just a lot easier. Um, then you're going to su to pi. 
you're going to edit the .profile file. And like the other file, you're just going to add um, the path variable export path equals to your local lib node.js slash bin or wherever you put node.js um, colon dollar sign path. Then you are going to execute that by dot tilde dot profile. All right, so then just make sure that everything is installed properly. So node minus V, npm version, npx minus V. And just make sure everything uh, looks copacetic. All right, so next we're gonna install Gitacker. Um, we're gonna go ahead and walk through the same thing. So apt install Bluetooth, blues, the Bluetooth dev, lib you dev, dev. Um, again, I'm not gonna walk through that. You guys see the command, npm install noble. You guys can pause the video while you do this, obviously. Nob install blino, and uh, we're gonna do an npm install attacker, okay? Again, replace the attacker folder with the custom scripts if I end up publishing the custom scripts. Then you're going to go ahead and do your sudo hci config and find out what the heck that device number is for your USB Bluetooth stick. Um, in my case, again, on this particular Pi, for my peripheral Pi, it's hci0. So I'm going to go into the attacker folder under node modules, and I'm just going to edit that config.env file. You're gonna uncomment noble and blino and change those to zero. You can probably just uncomment uh, the particular line, depending on if you're on peripheral or central, I haven't played with that yet. I just uncommented both of them, it doesn't matter. Because you can actually run this on, I believe you can actually run Gitacker on just one device, um, and then actually have multiple Bluetooth interfaces, and that's why you would, I, whatever, just use a two pi configuration. I thought I saw something about that in the notes on the Gitacker write-up, but, um, I just don't know how you would pull that off on a remote attack like something like this. So uh, just, just use my same architecture. Then you're going to, um, once you're done with that and you set the device variables, you're gonna go ahead and go to your central Pi, your peripherals all set up and ready to go. And the first thing I want you to do is on your central Pi, you're gonna go ahead and type the following commands. You're gonna type in, sudo user local lib node.js v8, in my case, bin node ws slave. All right, on the central pi, you are going to run ws hyphen slave, all right? You should, if everything runs properly, get a good attacker ws slave output from that command. Now on peripheral. On peripheral, we're gonna make sure you're, that you're in the attacker folder. All of your commands, all of everything is gonna be run from peripheral. Remember that, you're not running any commands on the, on the central pi except attacker ws slave. That's it. Okay, I want you to get off that pi and do everything within uh, the peripheral pi at this point. All right, so from the attacker folder, I want you guys to type in node space scan. Now what this will do is the peripheral pi will attempt a connection to the central pi. In this case, you guys will see that um, uh, it will connect to dot 107. And I do wanna make a point here I forgot to cover. WS underscore slave equals to the IP address of the WS labor peripheral, uh, the central pie, okay? So on the peripheral pie, you are going to set the device ID numbers and you will also set the WS slave IP to the IP address of the central pie, all right? So it knows what to connect to. So on the peripheral pie, from the attacker directory, I want you to type in node space scan. Now watch what happens when I do that. All right, so at the very top, I don't know if you guys noticed that. Um, oh, you know what? One thing I wanted to uh, actually have you guys do is I want you to, this is gonna sound crazy, but I want you to delete the devices folder. RMRF the devices folder from Gitacker. All right, 
why would you do this? It's because um, there's it actually will create brand new device files, brand new advertisement files uh, for every new Bluetooth device it finds. And if, it, if one already exists, it'll actually create a brand new one. And you'll have a bunch of duplicates in there and you won't like know which one to use. So I always like to clean it up and I like to delete the devices folder in between scans because you're probably not going to run the hack. Um, you're probably going to run the hack more than once on the same lock or when you're doing multiple locks like I am, in this case, I have six locks. I'm going to delete this devices folder every time. So you guys will see me do that between each hacking lab. Um, and then make sure to recreate that folder again, or it will not write those advertisement files. It's going to just, it, it's going to look like it's writing them, but you're going to be, a, you're going to see a bunch of error messages. Um, so MKDR devices after you uh, RMRF that directory. And then again, I just want you guys to type in node space scan. As we'll see it attempt to connect to the IP. And these are all of the Bluetooth devices that, it, that are within vicinity of Central Pi. Um, you guys will see my Bose uh, sound sport in there. You guys will see um, just all of these Bluetooth devices. Uh, the funny thing is, is we actually have, uh, my wife and I actually have two Ember mugs in here and I didn't know they use Bluetooth. Um, and so I actually found those devices doing this. I'm sorry, I found those mugs doing this. So it was kind of funny. Um, so I think I pretty much have everything at this point. Um, you guys will see my Dana lock in here and you will also see my, um, my August lock in here as well as the mug. So let's go into this folder. You guys see that? <laughs> Ember ceramic mug. That's amazing. I love that. Um, okay. So the, okay. So this is something really interesting that I want to show you guys. Um, and I'm actually me a bit to realize this but if it gets if it actually gets information on what the Bluetooth device is it'll give you the it'll create an ID uh, the file name will be the ID underscore and then the name of the Bluetooth device and the interesting thing here I don't know what that's about so you guys see that Haven right there as you guys remember in my lab I have a Haven lock but it's freaking me out because um, my Haven locks in the box and I don't know why it's finding it. The battery should not be actually um, in, like installed. That thing should not be on and it's coming up. So I think my neighbor has a Haven lock. I think one of my neighbors. We're in a, a multi-tenant building. Okay, um, yeah. So uh, now I want to show you guys something. You guys see that L309E01? At first, I was thinking, where the hell is my uh, where the hell is my August lock? Because I was hoping to find you know the August keyword somewhere in there, and uh, I couldn't see it. And I saw this L309E01 thing, and if I catted it. I didn't see anything about August in there, right? There's no manufacturer data. There's no local name. It just says, um, yeah, it just, it just says L309E01. I didn't see anything about August in here. And when I pulled up the August box, I saw this L309E01 as thinking that this was my August lock. And check this out. I don't know if you guys can see that. Do you guys see that serial number there? The serial number for this lock, look closely at that local name. The serial number is L3FYE09E01. So what August is doing is this is probably for, you know, security reasons, um, I'm assuming, um, which, you know, I got to give a pat on the back to August. Uh, you really don't want something like this if you're using a Bluetooth scanner for, you know, a, a, a burglar to be able to see that this is actually broadcasting, you know, August lock or something like that and be able to tell immediately that, um, that they're using an August lock. So, uh, again, um, this actually ends up matching the serial number minus the three. 
characters after L3. So I don't I'm I don't have their August lock, so I don't know if all August locks start with L3, but um, the local name field of your scan should actually bring up um, L3 and then it skips the next three characters and then 09E01. So I, I realized that that was indeed my August lock. So after we do that, um, we we know which file is the August lock, right? So there's our file name. What I want you guys to do is I want you to copy this. I want you to copy this part of the file name. And you guys notice it matches the ID field? That's the ID. I want you to copy that. So I'm going to copy that to my cache. And next, we are going to go ahead and do a node scan minus O. All right, so from the from the attacker directory, I want you to type in node space scan space minus O and then the ID that we just copied. Okay, do you see that? What it's gonna do is it's gonna actually connect to that Bluetooth device and start pulling a bunch of information off that lock. It's gonna just start pulling everything. And it's gonna create what's called an SRV file. And in, um, let me pull up, let me show you guys something. All right, do you guys see that? It pulled all this information. You'll actually see the, the log of that information getting pulled from uh, your window. If, you're if you've got an SSH session uh, to your central pie, which you should, I would obviously, you know, you ran WS slave on it, you should still have that terminal window open. Um, you'll see a huge dump of stuff that it pulled from the Bluetooth lock from the device. And uh, it will it stored it in this JSON file, okay? So if we cat that, it should have stuff in it. Okay, do you guys see that? All that's JSON, right? All right. Okay, so we are ready. All right, so what we did, I wanna quickly review, we did a node scan. Uh, and then it created a whole bunch of files in the devices folder. And we realized that 789C8508697.5 is indeed the ID of the August lock. And uh, it created an SRV file after we ran node scan with the dash O switch. Okay. So after you do that, you have your SRV file. You guys are ready to perform the attack. So I know it seemed like a lot to get here, but that you need to create those advertisement files and you need to create that service file. So you're gonna dot slash Mac ADV minus A devices and then the name of that um, advertisement file. Do not specify the service file, specify the advertisement file. So um, I'm gonna paste this. I'm gonna hit tab a couple times to figure out the file name and then it's underscore L3 use tab to autofill. Okay, so I've got Mac ADV, so that's advertisement, Mac advertisement, minus A, devices, and then the advertisement file. Now, what it's doing right now is, um, oh, sorry, one thing I want to make clear is you want to actually use sudo, because this requires root privileges, because you're actually spoofing your Mac address. So, what it's going to do is it's going to take your original MAC address, the true MAC address of that Bluetooth uh, thumb drive, and it's going to change that MAC address. Um, and so that's why it's, it's you're going to require root privileges. Um, once you do that, you're going to hit enter. Now, um, this is kind of funky. It, this can be really buggy. Um, what happens is sometimes this will get stuck and it'll say address change, reset device now, and then replug the interface and hit enter. And if you hit enter a couple times and it doesn't work, you're gonna wanna pull that Bluetooth USB stick out of the Pi, out of the peripheral Pi, and plug it back in and then hit enter again, and it should work. Um, it, it happens every once in a while, especially if I'm switching attacks between locks, this just, it just bugs out. I, I, I it could be a, a numerous reasons, um, but what I found when um, running this is um, 
you, you, if you just pull that stick out and put it back in, it should reset things. Um, I saw it happen if it was, my device address was already um, overwritten and, I, and it, it had changed it to the Mac and the attack. And then when I went back, it was still that address. And I saw BDADR, which is what this is calling. Um, <laughs> I've seen it get stuck. So um, one thing I want to make clear is this is the, the custom script. Um, what this is actually calling is if you go into helpers, um, BDADDR, it's just calling this command. All right, so BD sudo BDADDR. And this sh actually ships with GitTacker. So here's my Broadcom information and my MAC address. Okay, so when you run it, you're going to do BDADR as my side dev, and then the new uh, address that you're um, imitating, and again, that's um, going to be um, in, that, in that folder. So um, again, <clears throat> I will check on releasing these custom scripts. Um, so I'm going to just go back and do sudo. Back ADV. That time it didn't have any problems. Cool. So we're ready. That's it, guys and girls. That's all we do. All right. So let me quickly explain this again in the, in, in the architecture. I have WS Slave running on my central Pi. And on my peripheral Pi, I have um, the Mac ADV running or BD ADR running. Uh, and it's advertising. I called that advertisement file. And it's grabbing that data, and it's um, it's it's uh, broadcasting that fake MAC address, Bluetooth MAC address. All right. So here's my lock. I am. I have no idea how I'm going to do this. <laughs> Where can I set this lock so you guys can see it? Um, that's not going to work. All right. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'm going to record with my mobile phone. No, I need my phone. I can't do that. Shit. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start this up and just run the test. All right, so what's going to happen is you guys will... I'm going to take my phone to the other side of the house where the peripheral uh, where the peripheral device is and you guys should see my phone connect to the Raspberry Pi Bluetooth interface instead of the LOX interface. So again, I'm going to take my phone to where the peripheral Raspberry Pi is which is hooked up on the other side of my house and you guys should see a whole bunch of the, the um, packets, the Bluetooth packets, flow across the screen when that happens. Uh, and I will attempt to unlock the lock without being even next to the lock. Right? I'm going to be next to the attacker, um, the attacker's peripheral Raspberry Pi. If this were the use case, it would be me in the Starbucks and the attacker coming up behind me with their peripheral Pi and grabbing that and advertising it. All right, so I will be back. How, uh, how it stands up to this attack. Um, here it is, um, and you guys can still see some Bluetooth packets just kind of flying across that 
Um, so this client is obviously the um, peripheral pie. So um, yeah, so here's all the, the data. This is me unlocking the lock, um, even though the owner uh, with their MAC address is is in fact uh, not there. So um, yeah, pretty cool stuff. So uh, the August Lock Pro, um, so we are uh, 140. <laughs> um, uh, one being score for Team Hacker, Team Knight. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, looks like it is possible to perform a relay attack against an August Lock Pro. So next uh, we will be um, taking a look at the ellipse by Lattice and uh, that wraps it up for this episode on the August Lock Pro. The next episode uh, in this series will be going after the Bicycle Lock which is the ellipse by Lattice. So pretty scary stuff. Um, I, uh, I, I guess the outcome for this for me is that I will not be installing an August Lock on my front door. Um, I actually used to use these when I lived in Mexico. Um, I actually lived in Tijuana and uh, to, and Rosarito Beach, uh, if any of you are from there. Uh, and uh, I used the August Lock Pro on, on my front door. Uh, and uh, the final outcome of this test is, yeah, I, I will not be using this lock at all. So next lock, I will see you guys in the next episode. Till then, take care of yourselves. <laughs>